So today we're going to talk about the importance of parasite control, parasite resistance, and basic small ruminant husbandry. Um, so this is information we've learned from our vet, from our own independent research, from our fellow ranchers in the area who have sheep, and we just want to pass this knowledge on to anyone who's interested in adopting from our sheep um, to breed their herds or potentially interested in just raising sheep in general. Um, some of this information is specific to Dorper sheep, but not all of it is, and I'll talk about that a little more. So the first thing you want to do, and you may remember this from our morning routine video, is you want to FAMACHA score your sheep. And that's basically a way to tell if the iron content in their blood is real low, um, which could be an indicator of a high parasite load or something that's feeding on them from the inside. Um, it can also be indications of other issues, but typically this is your main way to tell if they're carrying a lot of parasites. So we're going to do that real quick with sheepy. Alright, go for it. Okay. okay, so this is called the push-pull-pop. You want to take their face, you want to push so their eyelashes bend over your thumb, and then pull their bottom lid and pop. Hold on, dude. See how it pops out and it's nice and red and pink right there? It's a good sign. We just recently dewormed these guys. You want to do it on both sides. So push, pull, pop. Again, nice and pink. Ideally, you want to do it in direct sunlight. At the moment, we don't have a shoot system in place, so we're having to do it inside the barn, and right now the light's not directly on. Okay, next I'm going to talk about your general health check. Um, some call it the five-point check. I call it the multi-point check because I check everything at once. Um, your main things you're going to want to look at is you're going to want to look in their nose, at their nostrils, and see if there's a lot of nasal discharge. It's winter, there's going to be a little bit. I don't actually see much at all. Um, but if you saw a heavy amount of nasal discharge and you saw any sort of movement, larvae, that could be signs of nasal bots, um, which can, from what I understand, can hop around. <laughs> between your sheep and you definitely don't want that. It's pretty brutal. I'll put some links in the description about what nasal bots, bots are and what to look out for. So that's your first thing you want to check. Um, second, I generally just like to look in their eyes, make sure they look clear. They're not cloudy or hazy. The animal's kind of focusing on you. He's looking at me. That's a good sign. He's alert. He's healthy. Next, I feel around on his jaw area. You'll want to feel around in here mainly. And if you feel any cysts or pus or anything like big, soft, round, golf ball things, um, those can be indications of bottle jaw. Um, you want to look out for that. I'm also going to go ahead and just feel in general around for any cysts. We have one little cyst right here. Notice it's not in an area where you would typically see, um, it's not over a lymph node. So it's not in a typical area you would see signs of CL, which is a pretty rough disease I'll talk about in a minute. This cyst, I've actually had the vet out to look at. We drained it. It was clear. No signs of CL or bacteria. It's actually just he poked himself on a thorn bush and his body's trying to heal up. Go. Another thing I check is I always feel around on his ear specifically. That's just specific to him. Um, he tends to get a lot of ticks on his ears. So I always touch him, make sure I don't feel any ticks. And they're all clear. That's not a normal thing the vet would tell you to do, but it's just something I've noticed with him from having this animal for so long. Next, we're going to check right here. You can feel his big bone right here. You want to put your hands on both sides, push down a little, see how far out his body's coming from that. He's at a decently healthy weight. He's a little heavy, not too bad. Um, nothing I would be concerned about. Um, but if he were gaunt right here, which Mary Jane is, and I'll show you in a minute, that's something you should be nervous about because that means they're a little too thin. It could be, again, a parasite issue where the nutrients are being taken by the parasites feeding on them. It could be anything else, but that's a good indicator of health. Uh, last but not least, the least pleasant part, you want to pull this up and make sure you don't see any signs of diarrhea or flies. Um, if there's flies or larvae, you got fly strike that can kill your animals so quick. So keep an eye on that and check that regularly. Um, diarrhea is an indication of parasites. It can be indications of other internal issues as well. Again, these are just basic ways to check the health of your animal. With farm animals, they're not going to show that they're sick or in pain the same way your cats or dogs will. 
so you have to be very proactive in identifying and checking on them. Um, you can also check their hooves. He gets a little feisty. We're in the process of building a chute so we can clip their hooves. But you want to do some hoof trimming and make sure you're checking for foot rot and you're keeping those hooves down. We'll do a separate video on that as that's not really related to parasites. Alright, so while we were talking about checking the sides of their spine, um, and that other bone there, I don't know the scientific term for it, I'll look it up and put it in the bottom of this video, but when we're checking their weight and seeing how much their stomachs are going out on either side, some key things you want to check for, if the left side is three times bigger than the right side, you've got an issue, um, there could be bloat, their rumen, their stomach compartments are on that side, and if they're bloating out or they're getting too big, that can be signs of a, a very serious issue. Frothy bloat, bloat um, are huge killers for sheep and goats, small ruminants, so always keep an eye on that. Um, I might do a separate video on that later, but right now we're focusing on parasites. When we talked about weight, you can see Mary Jane here. She's a bit hollow at the hips. You don't want your sheep to be hollow here. And I'll try to get a little closer if she'll let me. She's a little more shy see right here, it's okay. see how that's nice and hollow? You don't even have to press your fingers into it. Um, the reason she's so thin right now is because she is nursing a baby and he's taking a lot of her nutrients from her. Um, so we're making sure we've identified this issue so we're giving her extra nutrients to help build that back up for her and get her back to a healthier weight. Baby's super healthy. <laughs> he's cute. Um, He's getting his fur for the winter, so he's excited. Okay, so parasites typically come up from the soil. They can be transferred from flies biting the sheep. They can be transferred from all kinds of things, but typically what you're gonna see is your parasites are gonna infest the soil, and they're gonna climb up on grass or plants up to that one to two inch mark of the bottom of those plants. So one way to prevent them from eating the parts of the plant that parasites are most likely on is to not allow them to overgraze your land. If you're noticing all of your grass and plants are getting really short and they're starting to eat down to the dirt and they're eating the roots of those plants, they've been on that grass too long, you need to rotate them to the next pasture where it's nice and lush and green. This will also help your land look better, thrive better, and to grow back um, more evenly. So um, we'll talk in a second a little more about pasture rotating. One quick tour of the barn, I'm going to show you how you'll notice our floor is a dirt floor so we keep a layer of this pine shaving bedding on top and this helps prevent the animals from laying directly on the soil which is just one more barrier to parasites but it's also helpful in preventing feces buildups you want to be sure that you're breaking out your barn floor as frequently as possible <laughs> for us with how small of a herd we have we do it once a week sometimes twice a week if we notice it's getting bad if you have larger animals or more animals, it's going to be way more frequent than that. Um, feces buildups are just breeding grounds for flies. The flies are going to land on that dung, they're going to breed, they're going to put larvae in there, and then if your sheep are laying or standing in that, they're then attaching to your sheep. So clean up the feces buildup. Next thing is these pine shavings are great for soaking up urine. You don't want a whole lot of urine stagnating in your barn. Um, Partly because of parasites, but also because that scent of ammonia, if it's not well enough ventilated, can cause respiratory issues in your sheep. So you want to prevent that. Also, who wants to lay in feces and urine? Nobody, so keep it clean for your animals. When we feed the animals, we make sure not to put their food directly on the ground. Again, parasites come in from the soil. Also, because the ground is going to have moisture in it, and that food will suck up the moisture from the ground. Moisture is where parasites like to breathe. They like wet, damp, dark areas. So right now we're using a pan that we pour their feet into. We wash this pan frequently. Um, I just washed it yesterday. Um, you can go to any tractor supply though and get the nice long pans. Ideally, you want to mount that on a wall. We haven't gotten to that point in here because our setup's a little strange. Um, but that's ideal. Nice long feeding troughs off the ground. So it's important to pasture rotate your animals. Right now we have a setup where we fenced in two separate paddocks. That's the minimum you want. In an ideal world, we would have four. Um, we have just been so slammed, we haven't had time to fence everything. <laughs> but we fenced off a good four, four or so acres for them. 
We have paddock one over here, which they were on for several months. And you can see that beyond the blue silver gate. That's where our creek is. And now we have paddock two, which is over here on our left. And that's a very different layout of the land. So ideally what we're trying to do is as they start overgrazing that area, as they've been out there for about three months, that's the life cycle of your typical parasites are going to be 90 days. We're then going to check them. If they need dewormed, go ahead and deworm them and then move them over to the new paddock. We're breaking that life cycle of the parasites and then we're giving the original paddock three months to rest. So any parasites that are in the midst of their life cycle are going to die off. So when we bring them back in another three months, they're on a fresh new paddock, less parasite risk. I thought he was gonna ram me. Ah, 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 thinking about it. <laughs> I'm gonna talk about treating parasites. Not the last bit. All right, so we've shown you how to check your sheep to see if they're carrying a heavy parasite load, what signs to look for. Um, one thing I also wanted to mention was we pointed out how to check for diarrhea. That's always a sign something's going on. But also walk through your pasture and through the shelter every once in a while and take a look at what their feces piles look like. If they are little pellets, little round balls, then they're good, they're healthy. But if you start noticing those balls are clumping together, and looking more like dog feces, for example, um, that's an issue as well. That's another sign. So let's say you go and you check out your sheep and you notice that when you FAMACHA score them, their inner lower eyelid is almost white, a very light pink, there's not much red in there. Um, or you notice the feces issue, or you suspect that they're carrying a high parasite load for whatever reason. How do you treat it? There are several ways you can deworm your sheep. Um, the most commonly used method would be chemical dewormers. You can also try more naturalistic and holistic dewormers uh, such as wormwood, pumpkin. Um, to be honest, I haven't seen much research done on that online and I haven't been willing to take that chance with our flock when we know we carry such a heavy parasite load in our soil in our particular location. Um, our vet has warned us about that. Our next door neighbor lost an entire herd of goats uh, to parasites and it was so quick he couldn't even catch it and uh, treat it. So we want to avoid all that. We haven't taken any chances. So what we do here at Healing Moon Farm and Ranch is we use chemical dewormers. The most important thing to do is to be aware of the fact that parasites are resistant to several commercial dewormers. Ivermectin is the number one dewormer that parasites are resistant to, specifically in our area, but across the board. You can read a lot of research about this online. Um, your vet will most likely recommend to you to rotate your dewormers. So for one year, use one type of dewormer, for example, the ivermectin, and continually keep an eye on them. Make sure it's working when you deworm them. And then perhaps the next year you'll use fembendazole, which is a type of safeguard. Right now we're using fembendazole because we know um, we have this ivermectin resistance out here. They don't have a fembendazole safeguard for sheep, so I'm using for goats. It is the same type of suspension. It's 10% suspension, which is 100 uh, milligrams a milliliter. Um, and these come in 125 milliliter bottles. They have a handy dandy little chart on the back. Probably can't read that on here, but it shows you how much to give to each sheep per pound of body weight. So for example, 25 pounds, you would give 0.6 milliliters. What my vet suggests and what we found to be more productive is to be proactive. It's better to overdose than underdose. If you underdose, what's gonna happen is it's not gonna completely kill off those parasites. And over time, as you continue to underdose, your sheep may be fine, but those parasites are building up a resistance. Exactly what happened with ivermectin. Um, so to reduce the amount of resistance they're building up, overdose a little bit. I use, for example, 11 milliliters per dose per sheep when I use this. Um, 
However, that was approved by my veterinarian. He says bimbendazole is pretty safe to use. So make sure you double check with your veterinarian if you have any concerns about the proper dosage. So what is parasite resistance? It's very similar to antimicrobial resistance, which is when you take these antibiotics and what you're trying to treat becomes resistant to them over time because you don't use the full course of your antibiotics. Same exact thing with parasite resistance. If you're not dosing at a high enough level over time, it's not killing them all off, they become resistant, they build up a tolerance, and then suddenly you're losing sheep left and right because you can't treat them. The drugs are no longer working. One way you can tell if your dosage worked and if your treatment's working for your sheep is to do a fecal egg count. You can take a fecal sample, put it under a scope, and then you'll measure out the number of eggs that you see um, per section. I've never done this on my own. I typically take the fecal into my vet and let them do it. However, you can buy a scope online and you can watch some great training videos, which I'll link in the description about how to do it at home if you'd like to. If you have a huge flock, um, it's not realistic to assume you're just gonna take fecal samples to your vet all the time. Um, but this is a method you can use if you have a smaller, perhaps homestead or small farm.